What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Raw, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including a former WWE superstar recalls toxic work environment in WWE, WWE have stopped leakers, CM Punk makes a surprise appearance, the reason for Rhodes' rare pinfall loss, Dominic shoots down a long running rumor, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now as always we won't recap the show but just look at the good, the bad and the downright ugly. As always we start off with the good is number one, a loaded show. Last night's Raw was nothing short of loaded and could have easily been a card for a PLE. While many of the match outcomes were predictable, more about that later, they were all entertaining and either set up Elimination Chamber or furthered ongoing storylines. Number 2 Show Stealing Match by Ivar and Chad Gable Last night's Ivar and Chad Gable was the perfect conclusion for the series between Ivar and Valhalla against the Alpha Academy with Master Gable getting a decisive win over one half of the Viking Raiders. The WWE has wisely taken advantage of Eric's absence and given fans a chance to see what Ivar can do in singles matches which has proven to be quite a lot. Hopefully the WWE will use Chad's win to propel him into a worthy match at WrestleMania and end this feud as there's nothing left to do with it. Number 3 Raquel is back Raquel Rodriguez is back in the WWE wasted no time putting her into a top spot. Raquel isn't quite there yet as a main eventer in terms of her in-ring ability but she has the size and capabilities to work as a solid upper card star and even if she can polish her wrestling, she could easily become a main eventer. Booking her into the chamber match was a good way to add some variety to the competitors who were already working. Number 4, Mami cuts a good promo. Rhea Ripley is dynamite in the ring, but at times her microphone work has been hit and miss, especially when she's on her own. Last night's sit down interview was solid and shows Ripley's working hard to improve and more importantly, succeed. Number 5, a strong go home show. Raw was an important go-home show because SmackDown is a pre-taped show. While WWE's pre-taped shows have greatly improved, this live show excelled at hyping Elimination Chamber both with matches and the announcement that Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins will appear on the special edition of the Grayson Waller Effect. Number 6 Hype Videos Continue to Level Up Kevin Dunn who? Now we're not going to dismiss Kevin Dunn's achievements in the WWE's production department but it's clear that their new team isn't resting on Dunn's work. Instead, the production team's hype videos have taken what worked during Dunn's tenure and improved them by polishing them and making them a bit briefer for today's attention-starved audience. Number 7. R-Truth's Emmy Award-nominated documentary Speaking of videos, last night's mini-documentary detailing R-Truth's toxic relationship with the Judgment Day was even better than the previous one covering R-Truth's apparent affiliation with the group. Jackie Redman did a great job playing things straight to our truths over the top cluelessness and she deserves a bonus for not cracking up during Truth's comments, including the gem that this must have been how genuine felt when he wrote Pony and that I haven't cried like this since the finale of This Is Us. Just gold. That was a good what about the bad as number one, a predictable show. As entertaining as Raw was, the show was largely predictable with Jimmy Uso costing Jay what looked like a title win over Gunther and the bloodline Solo Sokoa costing Cody Rhodes his match against Drew McIntyre. This show was all about booking the heels working this Saturday's PLE so it's understandable that WWE felt the need for them to look strong. Unfortunately, the way they did was so formulaic and this isn't a great sign going into Elimination Chamber and the women's microphone mess. A raw segment where six women competing in the Elimination Chamber match showed up to trash talk each other was a magma hot microphone mess, another example of why these segments never work. It's difficult for anyone to get a word in edgewise and we have yet to see this work. While that was predictable, at least it was entertaining. Now there was nothing downright ugly as Raw built up anticipation for Elimination Chamber while also putting on some entertaining matches. What did you guys think of Raw last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first we looked at a former WWE superstar recalling a toxic work environment in WWE. Atop of today's news is an appearance by former superstar Paul Roma, best known for his team with Jim Powers in the later Hercules. Roma appeared on News Nation to discuss the latest scandal involving Vince McMahon and the WWE. 
During his appearance, Roman recalled the circumstances surrounding the Ring Boy scandal that included allegations against WWF employees Terry Garvin and Mel Phillips. It was pretty regular. You heard it on a regular basis for the most part. Then you wouldn't hear it for a while. Then it would come full circle. But it wasn't so much Vince as it was the people that he had surrounding him. You talk about an industry where you have young, good-looking, well-built men in the ring, half naked, three quarters naked actually. It left the door open. He had a lot of people around him, vice presidents and bookers that were very much into that. Roma discussed how once wrestlers began making good money, it was difficult to just walk away from their jobs. He also shared his take on allegations made by former enhancement teller Mario Mancini that he and Mancini heard about an incident worse than what Janelle Grant has alleged in a lawsuit. I really shouldn't right now, but yes, I do know what it is, and it is worse. When asked if he could characterize the incident in any way, he said, Just that Mari and I are really surprised. We spoke about it. We're surprised that no one has come forward. But on the flip side, I think they're of an age now that they may be married and have kids and don't want to open Pandora's box. I can't blame them. A Chicago firm now recently began advertising that will represent anyone who has been allegedly victimized by someone in the WWE. Next up, WWE have stopped the leakers. A fascinating rumor is making the rounds following Jey Uso's loss to Gunther last night during main event Jey's bid to become the new IC champion. While some fans believe Jimmy's interference was inevitable, WrestleVotes is reporting that Jey was actually booked to win the title. Hearing an interesting story we hope to follow up on with more tomorrow, sources state that there were multiple people within the company under the impression Jey Uso was winning the IC title tonight on Raw. I'm told that as late as 6pm, this was the direction on various show rundowns with the creative and digital departments. It seems like WWE is now giving false information to those within the company in the hopes that it will lead to wrong information being reported on various news sites. It also seemed a little crazy that Gunther would be dropping the Intercontinental Championship on the Go Home episode of Raw, especially with WrestleMania 40 only weeks away. But whilst WrestleVotes has a solid record of reporting accurate stories, it seems that WWE wanted to keep fans guessing about what seemed like an obvious outcome of Gunther winning thanks to Jimmy's interference and have individuals leak inaccurate spoilers. Next up, CM Punk makes a surprise appearance. A Cody Rhodes had a post-show conversation with the fans attending Raw, but he wasn't alone. The American Nightmare brought out CM Punk, who let the fans in Anaheim know about the next time he's there. He'll have his boots on. It's interactions like these that help fans form a strong bond with their favorite superstars. Next up, Tiffany's odd name change. The WWE has done it again, and it's taken an NXT superstar's nickname and changed it. In this case, Tiffany Stratton has gone from the buff Barbie to the blonde blockbuster. The only good thing is that Stratton hasn't had a name changed entirely, but they did change up a theme. But what do you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, what happened to Jade Cargill working Elimination Chamber? Now, while there were rumors that Cargill might appear at the last chance battle royal, that didn't happen. Instead, Raquel Rodriguez showed up and won the match. Although Jay could still appear in the match, with one possibility being one of the entrances mysteriously attacked before the match, Dave Meltzer is reported that WWE has its reasons for keeping Cargill out of the match. Obviously, we saw something change in the women's match, the women's battle royal, and it probably did since Friday. If you saw a scene on Friday where they had everyone there, that was for the women's chamber. They had Cargill in the room, basically foreshadowing. And there were rumors that the WWE planned to put Jade in the match, but also whisperings that the WWE had no intention to do so. Was this a case of the WWE debating the merits of putting Jade into the match? Meltzer mused, the plan was Cargill and they took her out for probably all the reasons that I said that they should because it actually, if you looked at it, it made no sense to put her in the chamber match. None at all. So they didn't. They put Raquel Rodriguez instead. Assured of Jade winning the chamber match, it's difficult to imagine any good reason for her putting her into the match and having her take a pinfall or submission loss so early in her WWE career. Cargill's participation in the Rumble worked so well because she was allowed to look strong and there's a big difference between getting thrown out of a Royal Rumble than counting the lights. Next up, the small details in WWE are working. The WWE's new production team continues to impress fans, as seen by the recent tweet from Wrestling News noting an improvement in WWE's lighting. The lighting of the arena is so much better than those red lights they used before to light the crowd. Did you guys notice the improvement? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, the reason for Rhodes' rare pinfall loss. Why did Cody Rhodes count the lights for Drew McIntyre on Raw? Rhodes' loss to Drew McIntyre surprised fans because Rhodes rarely gets pinned. However, the loss was meaningful as it furthered Drew McIntyre's persona as a hypocrite who talks about the honor but wins by any means necessary and it furthers the story of Cody needing someone's help against the bloodline. And finally, Dominic shoots down a long-running rumor. Last but not least, the Judgment Day's Dominic Mysterio is a heat magnet, or is he? Some fans have suggested on social media that the WWE actually pipes in booze for Daddy Dom to make him seem more reviled than he is. 
Dominic recently told Conan on Keeping It 100 that no booze need to be piped in and the crowd's reaction is legit. They like it when I do that, when I go out and try and cut a promo, especially if they need to cut time out of something or they need to save time. I can go out there with a mic for 2 or 3 minutes, pretend to cut a promo, I'm still blessed to get booed. I can't tell you, every city I go out to, it gets louder and louder. Fans who have attended live events confirm that Dirty Dom knows how to work the crowd. Well there you have it folks, I will look at Raw as well as the wildest news stories and rumours you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.